kilo. It's How you doing? First time I'm gonna say cheese, I'm a big fan. Say cheese. Straight up. So um we're in LA right now. How you um what's your LA experience like? It's beautiful, man. Um first I went to Oakland, then I came out here. It's just so different from back home as far as the weather, people or whatever. Yeah. It's people, good have people been noticing you lately? No. Oh, yeah. I had some good times. <laughs> Straight up. Some good so, times. So, you know, we're going to take it all the way to the beginning, um, you know, growing up in uh, Maryland. Um, what part of Maryland are you from? I'm from PG, Maryland, all day, pretty girl, kind of. Okay, so that's <laughs> yeah. not D.C. That's... No, I'm from Maryland. I travel in D.C. a lot, but I'm from Maryland and shit. Like, PG is right, it's right there by D.C. and shit, but yeah, I'm from Maryland. And what's tight about Maryland, and like that whole area for real, for real, is because like you get the countryside and you get the city side. So it never really gets old. Like when you come out here, there's no city. You don't got no damn metro. You know what I'm saying? You don't got that real city life. Like this, ain't, it ain't touching shit on DC. For real. For real. So you like it's remind me of Philly. Like Philly, you yeah. got the country and you got the city. Like yeah. it's a, I love Philly. Philly is hey. the shit. <laughs> like, yeah, appreciate that. I love Philly too. Now. How far is that from, how far is, is Maryland, where you're from, from D.C.? Uh, less than a mile. <laughs> like, less than a mile? It, I mean, it's like, it's right there. Like, it's right there. D.C. is really, really small. Right. Like, D.C. is, actually, the history of it is Maryland's land. Okay. It was swamp land, and yeah. then they turned it into a city. So you'd rather live in... But, like, in certain parts of, like, Virginia, you could just walk across the street and you'll be in D.C. Certain parts of Maryland, you just walk across the street, you'll be in D.C. Right. But, so you'd rather live in Maryland than L.A.? Um, I'd rather move around, but Maryland always going to be my home. Yeah. I plan on buying, like, um, a lot of property on Maryland. Like, I want a farm one day. <laughs> like, some real shit. I want a farm. You hear me? I'm going to grow fruit. Vegetables, I'm gonna have all that shit. That's my plans in life. Like, I really want to do this shit. I want to start. Well, I shouldn't tell all my plans, but <laughs> yeah, I want to I wanna be on my healthy kid shit. Right, straight up. So, okay, so growing up in, in DC at a young age, well, Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> a mile away from DC. And funny thing for anybody who watches this, every time I tell people I'm from Maryland, everybody always saying Baltimore. Baltimore is like a fucking hour away from PG. Ba Baltimore is not Maryland. So stop confusing that shit. But I love Baltimore, don't get that shit wrong. But I'm not from Baltimore. Right, when so people say they from Maryland, they not from Baltimore. Maryland is a big ass state. <laughs> like a big ass state. But PG is right there by DC. Right. That's now, growing up in PG, what was it like growing up as a youngin? Um, I was real chill. I mean, I was different. Um, I was real chill. I was just all into my art shit or whatever. But like, you get the best of both worlds or whatever. As far as like you got everything there, all different types of creatives, the most fashionable type of people, the most ratchet type of people, the most educated motherfuckers, black success, excellence to its finest in PG, like from some real shit. Like you see nothing but good upper mobility. You see, uh, you also see some downfalls too. Right. Uh, people and some other shit off the dip or whatever it may be, just lost, misguided. But for the most part, it's a beautiful area. What type of uh, student were you in school? Shit. <laughs> For everybody who in school, real life absorb all that shit. Cause I ain't really pay attention. I was, um, I had a lot of girls doing my work. And if it wasn't for all those girls, I probably wouldn't have passed and did what I did. But I graduated on 4.0. But it was a trick to that shit. I had a half a day. I went to, um, I went to community college for art and shit. And that's all I did. So I had two classes in high school and then I leave. You know, it's most days I ain't had to do shit. But then some days I just go, I would have these night classes and do art. And I painted like, in school, I ain't fucking socialized and shit. I was just by my work and I, or I do whatever I do and I'd be gone. But people knew me because I dressed however I wanted. I ain't wear no uniform or nothing. And I always had big ass canvases on me right. or whatever. Just odd. <laughs> and so then, you graduated on time? Oh, hell yeah. I ain't no fool. And then what but happened? Not to say graduated? anybody a fool if you don't graduate on time, but yeah. You said what? So what happened after you graduated? After I graduated, um, I literally, I was, um, I dropped my, I dropped a project. I went overseas and shit. I went to Sweden. And then the next year following, I went to London. And uh, then I kind of took some time off or whatever. Things kind of changed up for me. 
because I was a wild ass youngin'. Like early on I was wild as shit. It was just all girl shows and weed. That's really all it was about. Like I dropped this song recently called 1800 Collect and it was talking about that whole thing. Cause like I was real loud addicted to pussy money weed and I didn't even know it. Like I was just, I wasn't about it like I am now. But yeah, I just took some time to find like, to get my spirit back up. Mm -hmm. Got more connected. Okay, so you stop. Then I just dropped Finna and then yeah. <laughs> so when did you start taking it like serious though, like what, music? music? Um, I mean I took it serious early on. Like my first project I ever did was like when I was twelve. I recorded it. Um, um, I pressed the CDs, everything. I did all that shit. Um, it was probably about high school when um I started like working a little bit like closely around um some different associates and workers with Tabby Bonet. And like I was just talking about like on the ride up here and I got a link with it when I'm, when I'm out here too. But like um it was my first time seeing a set and now I'm like directing some like all my visuals and shit and like certain other visuals for other people too. Like I just directed this joint from Bucky Malone called Candyland. But like um it was around like high school I started taking more footsteps, more footsteps and went in different places and yeah, it's just been the focus. Right. Now I've been seeing you on a lot of blogs lately. Um I've even seen you make newspaper. Yeah, that How shit that was lit. Um, shout out to Chris Richards. Um, they, he hit me up, and it was funny because um, I got like another inquiry from Washington Post about some other shit, like months ahead of time, and they was like, you were referred from uh, Chris Richards, and it was funny because that shit was about like Sarah Palin and some shit. I'm like, what the fuck I'm supposed to talk about Sarah Palin for? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when I like searched his name, I saw him twice. But it was funny because I don't really fuck with interviews. Like, real shit, this is real. I don't really fuck with interviews at all. But, um, yeah, especially papers because I had bad experience. But me and Chris, he white, he from PG too, and shit. Like, I interviewed his ass before he interviewed me. We just talked about Go Go and shit beforehand because I saw he wrote a lot of articles for Go Go. And it was lit. Um, everybody that was on my show, that was on that show that I had that weekend, everybody was in the paper, made sure I put on. Cause I fuck with the area, it's a lot of talent back home. And it's really about to be like, it's that time. Like we really about to shine. Cause everybody's starting to pay attention. Cause it's so much different talent. And it's always been there since the prime of Go-Go. Mm -hmm. Like it's so much different. You got the spitter, you got the street motherfucker, you got the, the hipster, you got the stoner, you got all that shit. Right. Like, How was. is the area though? Like does Baltimore and DC fuck with each other? Um, It's starting to get more like, it's a few different artists like that are starting to collab more. Like I fuck with a lot of Baltimore artists and everything. Like people always, they brought up that facade, but that was a long time ago. I don't think that's holding any type of ground now, for real, for real. Like it's really meshing. That's why that our area is really about to blossom the way it is, because everybody's starting to connect. Like even street motherfuckers starting to connect. And I used to say this before in other interviews, like politics ruled a lot even into just how we communicate with each other and it being right there in the capital, it, I don't know, it's like a grimy city. If you ever notice people, a lot of people get their shit snatched when they come to DC. <laughs> like, people give no fucks in DC or just that area, like, but it ain't, it ain't all crap, girl. It's a lot of love, it's a beautiful city. One and thing I noticed when I first seen you um, is your hair. Mm -hmm. How long you been growing your hair? I've been lying to people like shit. I've been saying like four or five years, but it's been since like, I ain't going about to do the math. It's been since like 2011. Maybe 2010, actually. Five years and it's like, it's good that. Well, I had a bush. I used to be on some curly shit. And before the curly shit, I used to keep my hair like dead, like all the bad I was do. You know what I'm saying? Kept switching that showed up. I had every color in the book, but um, I always knew I wanted to lock my hair. And I was like, once I can get that commitment with my life, now I'm gonna lock it. And then I know in a couple years to come, I'm gonna make another commitment. I'm gonna just connect them all. What's your nationality? Um, I'm black. <laughs> Straight black? No, nah, I mean, of course, none of us are. But <laughs> everything comes from black. My mother is white. Um, she has Indian in her, and my father's black. But I know along down his lines, he got the shit in him. Along her lines, she got the shit in her too. But yeah, I call myself black. Like, how do your parents react to your music? Cause you are coming a long way. Um, 
them, they was real proud about the Washington Post, and I was proud to put it in their hands. But they still like, you know, they old heads, but they reflect a lot of my shit too. Like, I would've never wrote a song 1-800 if I ain't had my father around telling me, like, you wildin' out, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, I think, like, they've been nothing but supportive, and, you know, they love to hear about the shows. And I just can't wait to bring them on stage one day. Like, that's Did they the support plan. you from the beginning, or was it like, uh, you probably need to go to college, you probably need to get a job? Yeah, but I was just, I, I wasn't like a, all my other sisters or like um, a lot of other people. They knew I was not fucking with school. And I was just like, ain't no, t ain't no point of wasting it. And for real, for real, you go to school and they just telling you go get another job. Fuck that. I'm trying to build my own business. If anything, I'm going to build my own empire. Have you ever before? Of course. Of course. Who's your very first job? Uh, five guys. Five guys? <laughs> Down Gallery Place, Chinatown, D.C. <laughs> that shit was wild. Met a lot of people. Cool. I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And I worked at a health food store, um, Browns Market, Black Owned, um, South Maryland. And that shit that educated me a lot about different shit about life, healthy shit or whatever. You know? Do you last long at your jobs, or is it like, you know, you love your music so much, it's like, you probably do another month here, then quit and go back to music, and get another um, job? It's never or... really been that way. I mean, like, if I, I never got fired, and I mean, I ain't really had that many jobs in my life, to be honest, or whatever. But yeah, I find everything. Like, I don't got nobody pushing me, and I'm not really trying to accept any drug money or nothing like that, or no, I'm not trying to accept no... I shouldn't say that, but I'm not trying to accept nobody fucking pocket right now. I just want to do it myself. I definitely need help though, but yeah, I got God, so I'm good. Now, I got you, you know what I'm saying? We doing this right here. We good. One thing I noticed is your style. I don't want to say tomboyish, but it's kind of, you know, masculine. Yeah, somebody gave it a word the other day. Y'all know that word? I'm trying to think of it. I forgot it. When it's like masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's that? Y'all know the word I'm talking about? Like, they would call us this. I, I can't forget what it's called. But <laughs> gosh, what is it called? Because this, this boy, he was like her androgynous. Androgynous style is to die for. Um, I never really, like, I, I grew up when I was a kid, and that's probably why I distanced myself, because I dressed like a, everybody called me a boy. I really hated the word boy for a long time, but it was just how I felt comfortable. Like, that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to wear dresses. I didn't want to wear, I wasn't even to the pink shit, and I used to hate my name Letitia so for some reason when I was younger, but now I love it. But, um, yeah, and I just grew up. And I started getting my nails done. My mom get her nails done, so it kind of fed off on me. But it just stuck to me, like this is right. This is me. Yeah. I feel comfortable dressing this way. So how, when you were younger, you, did you, you did you wear dresses? Your mom put you in dresses? No, I used to get dresses, and I would. I, I remember getting a dress for a gift and gave it back. <laughs> like I was like, why would you give me this? Like I don't want to wear this. I want to wear jerseys and shorts. Yeah. Like most some real shit. Right. A1. <laughs> I used to rock A1. Such a Bama. And FUBU. <laughs> but yeah. I wasn't, I just was never really like that. But I do got some pictures with dresses, of course. You know, like prom, some shit like that. Did you ever get like teased in school because your look? Or did people accept you because they probably, you know? Um, man, niggas ain't used to that shit early on. Like it's coming now to a place where you used to it. You know what I'm saying? But fuck it. That's why I just got that mentality. I don't give a fuck with anybody I care about. Because motherfuckers ain't fuck with me early, so fuck you, man. <laughs> but like, I got love for people though. And I don't know, it's just different as you grown. Children different. But I ain't never like, um, wasn't sweet. <laughs>